Morning, everybody. I'm really sorry if I seem to be cranky today. I feel so bad. This cold is getting the best of me, and like my kids, it seems to get worse and worse. But anyway, I wanted to share with y'all, I love yogurt, and I make homemade yogurt every week. So Pam, especially, this is for you. I know how much you love yogurt. Um, I made a jar, I made a half gallon. This is only a quart jar. It's only half of it. What I made yesterday, and I started this video once, and I had to start it over because a cute little blue-eyed, blonde-headed boy kept causing problems. <laughs> we all know who that is. Anyway, I have a bowl. I was hoping you could see all this. I'm going to try to scoot this back a bit and see if it picks up this stuff in front of me. Uh, darn it. Well, here we go. Maybe I can get it far enough back. If not, I'll just show you what I'm doing. That bad word. Darn it is a bad word. I just got corrected. Anyway, I have a bowl and a spoon. And I open my yogurt. And when you make homemade yogurt, you will find a little bit of whey that settles in it. But I pour it off. And this is nice. If you can see how thick it is. Nice and thick. Homemade yogurt. Yummy, yummy. Takes no special equipment. All you need is a thermometer, a candy thermometer, a three, four dollar candy thermometer, a couple jars, a big pot, um, some powdered milk, and in my case, let's say you just want to make a a quart, and you don't want to make a half gallon. You're gonna need. A quart of milk. Can you see that cute little head in the video? You're going to need a quart of milk, whole milk, skim milk, whatever you choose, and a third of a cup of powdered milk. I use non-fat powdered milk. You heat your milk to 200 degrees. And if you want your yogurt thicker, Put it on a lower setting and let it like as if you were cooking something down just a little bit. Let it cook a few minutes. Jonathan, get back. Your name is going to be Mud. Yeah. Um, let it cook down. Then let that rise to 200 degrees. You're going to have your, your candy thermometer there gauging it. If you don't want to make sure it doesn't boil over, if you'll just lay a wooden spoon across the top of your pan, it won't boil over. The next thing you do is once you, that reaches that temperature, move it off the heat source. And uh, dogs, be quiet. And um, immediately add your one third of cup of powdered milk. Now, you may have some skim on the top. You can remove that. You may have some that is formed on the bottom. Don't worry about that because. Down the road, you can use a, uh, you can, I just use a strainer and strain all that off. So, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be particular. You just don't want it to burn. Once that your milk cold with the powdered milk in it goes down to 100 degrees, once it cools to 100 degrees, then you're going to want a yogurt starter. You can use, I use, you can go to the store, Brown Cow is a, a very good brand. But what you're going to want is you're going to want to get either Greek yogurt, I think Oikos doesn't have anything but milk and live bacteria in it. That's what you're going to look for. You don't want any with pectin or anything else in it. You don't want any fruit in it. You don't want any sweetener in it. You want plain yogurt. And use two, I mean, heaping tablespoons of that yogurt in your milk. Stir it up very, very good. Put it in your container. You know, you might need to go ahead at that point and use a, a strainer and strain out any stuff that's gotten hard in it on the bottom of the pan or on the bottom of the pan. Somebody's throwing dominoes down to irritate me. So we're just going to ignore him. Some people that get on YouTube and do the annoying things. We just yeah, ignore them. Anyway, um, at that point, I use a styrofoam ice chest, and I fill it with water that is about 110 degrees. 
Me, I've done it so long, I just do it. I set it in my bathtub, fill it from the bath spout, and set your yogurt with a lid on it, down in it. You can, oh, you know, submerge it halfway or less it's small. Put the lid on it, and in about three hours, check to make sure it's setting up. If it's not setting up, add a little more hot water to the mix. It's just not warm enough to get the cultures going. At that point, if you like a very, very mild yogurt, stop at about five hours, six hours. You can go on up to 12 hours. I like to be able to smell that yogurt and taste that little bit of time. Once you've done that, you are going to see liquid formed around in the jar. Don't try to drain it. Set it in your icebox, let it set up, and you can drain yeah. any way that is formed. There's not going to be that much. Do you enjoy? Oh. Me, at all times, I keep frozen, different kinds of frozen food in the freezer. Yeah. And how you do that is you, Jonathan, you're getting ready to get in big trouble. Please be quiet. How you do that is you can take a cookie sheet. Put your fruit on it, put a piece of wax paper yeah. on it, put your fruit down on it in a single layer, stick it in your freezer, let it freeze, and you put it in your container. And what happens is your fruit's not all stuck together. So I have a mixture of blueberries, strawberry slices, and I'm going to put them in here. You can see some of mine is stuck because I've had it out of the freezer before. And then to that... I made a mess, took it on my pajamas. I, because I'm constantly trying to lose weight, and because my husband's a diabetic, we use Splenda, scoop of Splenda, type of spoon of Splenda, whatever you want to use. And of course the camera's on too. And on top of that, a little homemade granola. Mm, puts that little crunch in it. And there you go. Bon Appetit. Let me see if I can show you how yummy it is. Well, <laughs> there you go. That is my breakfast. Greek yogurt and fruit. Y'all have a good day. Bye-bye.